Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Before I get started, I'd just like to say a special thank you to Tom from Hilltop Machine Works and Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, both these gentlemen gave me a shout out and uh, I only gained about 100 subscribers. So look, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. So to my new subscribers, I say welcome. And to my existing subscribers, I say thank you for your continuing support. Uh, just got it in the mail, guys, uh, fresh off the press. And I uh, want to say a big thank you to Lance uh, Maskell from Bunny Bear Shed. Uh, Lance sent me a sticker and he also sent me this awesome stubby holder. So uh, thank you, Lance, very much. And I'll put your sticker up on the board now, mate. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you. So yesterday I went out to Muckleford, which is a little country town, roughly about 120 kilometers, uh, which is 75 miles outside of Melbourne where I live. And uh, we went to a antique or vintage machinery rally. And you wouldn't believe it, I bumped into Thomas, who's one of my high school engineering students. And uh, I'm very proud of young Thomas. Uh, I had no idea he was interested in this sort of uh, machinery and equipment. He did mention it in class once and uh, I went out there and here he is, you know, proud as punch driving his International Harvester W6 tractor, which he even bought and paid for with his own money. Uh, it was good on you, mate. I'm very, very proud of you. Additionally, uh, I saw his father out there as well, and I believe his name is Scott. Uh, Scott gave me an awesome sticker. And even Scott had a crack uh, with his old Fords and Major. But unfortunately, Scott, that old Fords and Major, mate, it wouldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding, would it? Anyway, um, so thanks for the sticker, buddy. I'll throw that up on the board as well while I'm uh, chatting to you now. So big thank you to my teacher aide, Andrew Benister. Andrew for Easter gave me this lovely framed photo sectional view of a Lance tractor. So mate, I really appreciate that. And that's hanging out pride and joy alongside my sticker board in my workshop. So as you can see in front of me, I've lashed out and bought myself a bandsaw. Um, I picked this up on Friday from a company called Heron Forbes or Machinery Warehouse and it cost me uh, $726 and no, I did not get it for free. I wish I had, but I didn't. Um, they were kind enough to throw in a spare blade, so thank you very much. It was a, a little bit ironic really because when I walked down there, a gentleman will serve me and the branch manager walked down and he goes, hey, I know you. You're, you've got a YouTube channel and you've got a CNC machine, so yeah. Um, there you go, eh? Funny places where you get seen. And uh, it wasn't from this channel, it's from my other channel. So why did I buy a bandsaw? Because I'm sick and bloody tired of using this hacksaw. And let's face it, you don't get a body like this by exerting yourself. Now, this is the same bandsaw that Emma from Emma's Spare and Machine Shop recently got. And I looked around for a while for a bandsaw and um, I must say, I'm very, very happy with this one. Um, it's totally made from cast aluminium or aluminum as my USA buddies like to say. Uh, the base, it, and it's actually a swivel base bandsaw. Very sturdy and I kid you not, it cuts through steel and aluminium like a hot knife through butter. I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, I, I haven't been worried about <laughs> the cutting speed of the blade. I've just been using it flat out and, and hoeing into it. And I must say it's uh, really sped up my workflow in the shop. Now, one of the main reasons I bought this bandsaw was so I could do this little project, and this is making some T-nuts. They're metric T-nuts for my manual milling machine. Now, they are 25 millimeters wide on the base and 40 millimeters wide on the, uh, the upper section. I cut them to one inch long, and uh, I was really, really happy with the, with the way my little mill cut these out. Now, as you know, I've been a CNC guy for a long time. I was originally learnt all manual machining but then got spoilt and got addicted to CNC and uh, sort of lost my way with manual machining. Now when I made these T-nuts I made it as one complete length and I thought that would be easier to do. Now the method behind my madness is because when I make it one like this, one long length like this, I've only got to hit the sizes once. In reality I should have cut them out of the metal, out of the bar stock that way, okay, but I would have had to hit the sizes three times which is not hard, I could have done it. Um, you know, probably would have stuffed one or two up, but anyway.
Well, I don't have a tap wrench big enough. Um, I think I may have had once, but I've got no idea where it is now, so I'm going to have to put the old shifter on it. And uh, what we commonly refer to a shifter of in, a shifting spanner or an adjustable wrench in Australia, we call that a nut fucker. Because everything it touch, it F U X. Now it's a bit humpty dumpty what I'm doing here, guys. Not my finest moments in tapping, let me tell you. This is a tape tap or a starting tap. Now, I don't like using that method, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because you're only putting one uh, moment of force on it instead of a couple, if you understand physics, where if you had a T-handle, you've got a uh, hand on either side. This one, you're pulling over and you're pulling the tap into the wall, and you can stretch the wall of the threads if you're not careful. Doing it this way, to me, worked much easier. And I tell you what, I won't make this mistake a second time. I took a full depth cut, you know, which milling machine, milling cutters are designed to do. However, it bloody, it, the, the little splinters coming off that, I tell you what, they're like little needles and they got in everywhere. It got into my shirt, my undies, you know, socks, my feet. Christ, I won't be doing that again. Now, I have to say I was a little bit of a Humpty Dumpty with the tap. Would you believe I don't have a big enough tap handle to hold my bigger size tap? So that, that's a flaw in my workshop, something I need to uh, rectify real soon. And hopefully the wife won't see that expense either <laughs> when I buy it. So this bluing, you all know about it. It's just bluing with old sump oil. This was sump oil that I pulled out of my little generator. And it's I find used sump oil works better than new sump oil. Uh, used sump oil usually gives you a darker colour where new sump oil... It's not as bright. I heated it up with my little butane torch uh, and then dunked it straight into the sump oil to, and let it quench off in there and let it cool down. Now you can see that I get different shades of blue, but overall I'm quite happy with it. So there we have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, trust you got something out of the video. Uh, make sure you go and check out Bunny Bear Shed and uh, say good day to Lance. Tell him Aaron sent you. And uh, I'll see you on the next Monday Ramblings or a workshop video uh, when I upload it. All right? Thanks again. Catch you later. Bye-bye. And hopefully... Make sure you put your phone on silent when you're shooting a video. Here we go. Hello. Oh, really? My computer's got a virus. Hmm. That's strange, mate. I don't have a computer. No, no computer here, mate. No, we use pigeon carriers, mate. You know, pigeons, birds, uh, when they don't come back, I shove a suppository up the chihuahua's ass and send him up the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, buddy, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'll teach you a word of Vietnamese. Dolma. That word in Vietnamese was said to me by one of my Vietnamese students. It means to go on F-U-C-K your mother. Oh, hell no. Diane! Yeah. Get the chihuahuas. Cutting edge is showing us up. What's it? Meerkat. Good boy. Sit. Shake. Good boy. Drop. Roll. Over. Good boy. Meerkat.